What's up guys, today we're going to be looking at the new Ryzen 5 5600X. And yeah, we're going to be comparing it to our Ryzen 5 3600 previous generation currently installed in this PC. So, we never bought the X, didn't see the point. Lots of reviewers didn't, doesn't matter. It's still a good CPU. Anyway, so we don't have a choice. It's either 5600X or get the fuck out. And yeah, we're going to use a 5700XT mainly because, well, we don't have a Ampere card yet. No 3080s. Thanks, NVIDIA. Now, this is the retail package. This is what you're going to get if you ordered one. You got it like this. If you're still going to order one, that's what you're getting. You get a cooler. Other ones at the moment don't come with a cooler. So it is a stealth cooler. The last X came with a Spire, much better cooler, but thicker. This one, whatever. We're going with a Noctua D15, much better, LTT, limited edition. And here's the CPU. Come on, focus a little bit. Ah, uh, oh, whatever. You get the idea, that's the CPU. Now, we're gonna test it in some benchmarks. Maybe you buy a 5600X after this, maybe you don't. Let's find out. Well, there you have it guys, another mixed bag of results here. You know, some are good, some are not so good. But the ones that are in the really low percentages are actually just, yeah, they're due to the 5700 XT that we used. These games are more GPU intensive and the CPUs aren't really being like kind of pushed to their full potential. And uh, yeah, we'll be running the same test on our 3080 when we eventually receive it. It's looking like 2021 at this point. Thanks Nvidia once again. They're just not delivering shit, and the ball partners are also being kind of screwed by them. Yeah, it's just a lot of frustrated people out there. Regardless of that, let's jump into these percentage uh, differences that we're seeing between the CPUs. And let's start off. So games like Apex Legend, Battlefield 5, and Warzone, yeah, they're all very GPU intensive, and they saw a really, really tiny uh, increase in our test. Now, Apex, we we even not even putting it down to actually any increase whatsoever, technically, because it wasn't even 1%. We rounded it up to a percent. However, the actual like increase was like 0.7%, and that's just not really a big enough increase to even use it as a proper metric. So now we did see some really nice increases in some other games, which are more CPU intensive. And we got a massive 56% increase in average frames in F1 2019. That's really good. That's a really decent increase between one generation to the next. We also saw a 37% increase in Far Cry 5. That's extra sexy. Like, that's really nice. Like, Far Cry 5 is notorious being used by a lot of, like, reviewers for benchmarking. And, yeah, it's nice to see that increase. And then the next one is World War Z. Saw a very decent 34% increase. Um, yeah, all very, very strong. The other ones are so pretty decent. Some good figures there. Just those three that were under, like, under 3%. 3% and lower. They, yeah. Can't do anything about it. We'll test them again, like I said, with the 3080 when we eventually get it. So the very important question is, should you buy this CPU? And the answer is not really that simple. Yes, it's nice to have new hardware. Yes, it's nice to have the IPC increases. And yes, it's nice to see a higher frequency CPU. Though, yeah, it's, it's a difficult question. So if you have a 3600 or a 3600X, is it really worth spending $299 or 349 euros, the current kind of price in Europe at the moment, on the CPU? And only you can really answer that yourself. Like if you have the disposable cash just lying around, yeah, go do it. If you're going to save, sell a CPU to actually buy it, 
I don't know, maybe just stick with your, your current 3600 or 3600X. Now, if you are coming from like a Zen or Zen Plus chip, so let's say 1600, 1600X or a 2600 or a 2600X, I'm more inclined to actually recommend the CPU to you than if you were running like a Zen 2 CPU. If you're building a new rig and you actually never had an AMD processor before, I'm also more inclined to recommend the CPU to you. So yeah, there are there are cases where it's I would recommend it. There's also cases where I don't. Another case that I'm not too like sure about recommend. It's not about not too sure. There where I wouldn't really recommend it is of course if you're building a budget workstation. So the six cores are a bit of a limiting factor for a workstation here. I would recommend eight cores. Um, Twelve cores would be even better than that. And if the Ryzen 5000 eight and twelve core or sixteen core even are way out of your budget, then yeah, definitely look at the 3800X or XT and the 3900X or XT because they've actually come down in price a bit and there's going to be some really stellar deals coming now for Christmas. And now with Ryzen 5000, the prices are going to drop in those CPUs quite a bit. And they're great. There's nothing wrong with them. They're good for gaming. Sure, you're not going to see as high frame rates in a lot of games, but it doesn't matter if you're buying this as a budget workstation, 3800 and the 3900 are still tip top. Definitely recommend that over looking at the 5600X. But overall, we're super impressed with uh, what AMD's actually done with Zen 3. But yeah, Team Red has definitely been making some massive strides while Team Blue has kind of been caught napping due to their complacency and also with their massive position in the market. So they've just not really put in much effort. Though they will be coming up with new CPUs at some point next year. And yeah, they'll probably take the crown. Maybe not, we'll see. So if you liked our video, give us a thumbs up. Or if you didn't, well, there's nothing much we can do about it. You can give us a thumbs down. If you haven't subscribed uh, yet, then hit the subscribe button and click on the bell icon and you'll get notified when we post a new video. Uh, we actually have a Series X video coming up and all we can say is that this console is actually really sweet. Also, check us out on Instagram and Twitter. We post shit there. We also have Facebook, but we never touch that. Uh, we don't even do anything there, so don't, don't really bother following us there. But yeah, until next time, bye.